you know what I find about scatter charts is that they look great initially and then when you dig a little bit deeper it's just a messy noise that nobody knows how to read. Well that is unless you build them right. Hi my name is Anne from Adair Major Consulting. We help businesses turn their data into insights and today I'm going to help you turn a plain boring messy scatter chart into an interactive useful tool. We're going to have dynamic access, adjustable thresholds and build in interactivity that your users will actually want to use. On screen, you'll see that I've got a really simple data set. You'll find it linked below if you'd like to follow along. It includes a number of different fields that we're going to show up on a scatter chart. So we'll start off by adding the scatter visual. And on the X axis, I'll drag in market size and Y, I'll add a profitability. It's not very clear. Even if I then for details drop in the market segment so that each dot represents one segment, well now it's really noisy. But what about if I change the size of the dots depending on the ROI? Yeah, no, it's still really messy. And you can see why people, well, avoid this chart so often. But with a little bit of love and formatting, this actually can become such an interactive tool. So the first thing we can do for our users is give them some options. We're going to do that by using field parameters. Field parameters are without a doubt, I think my favorite feature in Power BI these days. All I need to do is go to modeling, new parameter, fields. A field parameter lets you swap out which measure appears on the visual, completely code free. So I'll name the field parameter and then I'll just add four fields in, profitability, ROI score, growth rate, and competition index. When I click create, Power BI is going to add a new table into the background. But what I see here on my report canvas is a slicer automatically appearing. But if I select anything on that slicer right now, well, it doesn't do anything to the chart. What we need to do is replace what's on our Y axis now with our new parameter. Now that slicer is changing what is coming up on our Y axis. When I pick ROI, the Y axis switches to ROI. And when I pick growth rate or competition index, it instantly updates. This is our first really big upgrade. It turns a static visual into something interactive. Now, the next interactive thing I want to do is give the users an ability to kind of gray out what's not relevant. So we're going to do that by adding an interactive reference line, a dynamic threshold for market size. So before we used a field parameter, now we're going to do a numeric range parameter. Because my data runs up to about 150 million currently, I'm going to overshoot that a little bit and set it to 200. Just like field parameter, Power BI gives us that slicer automatically, giving us that little slider to choose a numeric value. Now, when I select my scatter chart, on the formatting pane, I look for reference line going to add an X axis reference line. I have the option to add it as a constant number and that's the default, but that little FX icon is the secret. Click the FX icon and then I can choose the parameter that we've just set up. Now, when we move that slider, that reference line moves with it. This really makes the scatter chart feel alive. We're giving our report users complete control. We're going to make it a little bit cleaner and change up the formatting slightly. I'm going to add a data label, for example. You can also add a shaded region. So I can choose a light color and lower the transparency. You can decide whether the shade appears before or after the line, or whether it sits in front of or behind the dots. In this case, I like it just in front of the bubbles and behind the line. That way it gently fades out the smaller market and highlight the ones above our cutoff. Now for even more control, so that in case scatter charts can get a little bit crowded, we want to be able to let the users zoom in. With visual selected in the formatting tab, I can choose to add on a zoom slider. I love zoom sliders. It really lets your user literally zoom into the data. Unlike a slicer, it doesn't change any of the data on the page. It just changes the view. Now the users can focus in on high profit or high ROI ranges without filtering out any of the data. We have an X axis and a Y axis, but let's add a third dimension. 
So if I drag in growth rate into the size field, it's going to change the size of those bubbles. For size, I also like to make sure that my transparency is at least only 50% so that overlapping bubbles stay visible. Bigger bubbles now represent faster growing markets. Now let's add an even more business context. So I'm going to take my status and add it to legend. This is going to give us three different colors. In addition, I'll add a slicer so my end user can choose to only view one status at a time if they want. This immediately adds meaning. We're not just looking at performance metrics, we're seeing how they differ by the business lifecycle stages. Finally, I just wanna add one more thing outside the scatter chart itself. So adding a table with just my market segment and some numbers means that when I click a bubble on the scatter chart, it cross filters that table and I only see that information. Also means that I can hold down control and select multiple to see multiple on that table and really highlight only a few on that scatter chart. Isn't this scatter chart just so much better? It's really an interactive tool now. It's something that I love being able to do is add that dynamic element into my reports for my users. Something else I use all the time to make my reports feel really dynamic and interactive is drill through. It keeps my report really clean, but lets my users dive into the data. I'm gonna leave my video just here about how to apply drill through to any Power BI report for you to check out next.